All right, let's talk about the future. No, not the flying cars and personal jetpacks we were promised. Let's talk about something a little more aggressive. We hear about fifth-generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35, and we marvel at their stealth and sensor fusion. They are, without a doubt, the kings of the current sky. However, today we are going to talk about something far ahead in future, something that may look like sci-fi, but is surely wonder that will be true in no coming years. We are talking about the seventh generation fighters that will break all records. Now, before the aviation sticklers in the audience start writing angry comments, let's clear something up. The B-2 and B-21 are bombers, heavy, strategic, continent-crossing delivery platforms for when you absolutely, positively have to ruin someone's entire week from 50,000 feet. Fighters are a different beast entirely. Nimble, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground specialists designed to achieve and maintain air superiority. They are the fencers, the duelists, the apex predators of the sky. The jump from the sixth generation, which is still on the drawing board, by the way, to the seventh generation won't be a stab. It will be a quantum leap. It will be the difference between a horse and a spaceship. So buckle up. We're going to put on our tinfoil hats, but we're going to line them with peer-reviewed papers and defense industry white papers. We're going to dust off the crystal ball, but we're going to power it with logical extrapolation from existing technological vectors. What will a seventh generation fighter actually be? What records will it break? The answer is all of them, and in ways you can't even imagine. To understand where we're going, we need a lightning-fast recap of where we've been. Fighter generations are like technological signposts, starting from the first generation, the dawn of the jet age. Think the ME2 to the Becky Saber. They had jet engines, guns, and not much else. The big innovation was just getting rid of the propeller. Second generation, the need for speed. These were supersonic, afterburner-equipped rockets with rudimentary radars and the first air-to-air -air missiles. The F-104 Starfighter, a plane famously described as a missile with a man in it, is the poster child. Third generation, these jets, like the legendary F-4 Phantom, became true multi-role platforms, better radars, better missiles, and the ability to do more than just fly in a straight line very, very fast. Fourth generation, the digital age begins. Planes like the F-16 and F-A-18 brought in fly-by-wire controls, heads-up displays, and incredible dogfighting agility. They represented a huge leap in maneuverability and pilot-machine interface. The 4.5 generation, with jets like the Eurofighter Typhoon and the Su-35, added better sensors and some stealthy characteristics. Fifth generation, the Ghost. This is today's top tier, the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. The defining characteristics are all aspect stealth, or very low observability, and sensor fusion. The plane takes information from every sensor on board, and from friendly assets, and fuses it into a single godlike view of the battle space for the pilot. It's about seeing without being seen. So what's next? The sixth generation. This is what the world's air forces are working on right now, with programs like the American Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD, and the joint British-Japanese-Italian Global Combat Air Program, or GCAP. The key concepts here are an optionally manned approach, where the same airframe can fly with or without a pilot, advanced variable cycle engines that can switch between high thrust and high efficiency, and the idea of a system of systems. The fighter isn't just one plane, it's the quarterback of a team of uncrewed, loyal wingman drones. And that, that is the jumping off point. The sixth generation is the final evolution of the piloted fighter as we know it. The seventh generation throws the rulebook into a shredder, sets the shreds on fire, and then uses the ashes to 3D print a new rulebook written in a language we barely understand. Let's break down the seventh generation fighter, not by its airframe, but by the revolutionary pillars of technology that will define it. Pillar one, the brain, true cognitive AI. This is the single biggest paradigm shift. Forget autopilot. Forget flight assistance. We are talking about a true, onboard, cognitive artificial intelligence that acts as the pilot 
co-pilot, and mission commander simultaneously. The AI in a fifth-gen fighter helps the pilot manage information. The AI in a sixth-gen fighter might fly the plane while the pilot manages the battle. The AI in a 7th gen fighter is the battle manager. Think about the OODA loop, a concept core to aerial combat. Observe, orient, decide, act. For a human pilot, even the best, this takes time. Seconds, or fractions of a second. For an AI, this loop is compressed to the speed of electrons. A 7th gen AI could run a million combat simulations, considering every possible variable. Enemy missile ranges, friendly asset positions, fuel state, electronic warfare environment. In the time it takes a human pilot to blink, it won't just react to a threat. It will have already positioned the aircraft to defeat a threat that the enemy hasn't even launched yet, based on predictive modeling of the enemy pilot's likely intentions. This isn't just about dogfighting. This AI would manage the entire platform. Is the aircraft slightly damaged? The AI will reroute power, adjust the flight control surfaces, and change the mission parameters to compensate, all without a single bead of sweat. It will talk to every other friendly asset in the battle space. Satellites, ground troops, naval vessels, uh -huh. other fighters. Not just sharing data, but collaboratively creating a single sentient network of warfighting capability. The humorists among us immediately shout Skynet. And yes, the philosophical and ethical questions are enormous. We'll get to that. But from a pure capability standpoint, an aircraft whose central nervous system is a predictive, adaptive, learning AI breaks the sound barrier of decision-making. No human pilot, no matter how skilled, can compete with that. It's like a chess grandmaster playing against a supercomputer, but the supercomputer is also flying a Mach 3 jet and juggling laser beams. Pillar 2. The body, metamaterials, and biomimicry. The shape of a fighter jet has always been a compromise. A compromise between speed, maneuverability, and stealth. You can't have a wing that's perfect for a high G turn and also perfect for a supersonic dash. Or can you? Enter the world of metamaterials. These aren't just advanced composites. These are materials engineered at a molecular level to have properties not found in nature. A seventh generation fighter won't have a static airframe. It will have a morphing one. Imagine wings that can change their shape, their thickness, and even their length in mid-flight. For takeoff and low-speed maneuvering, they could be long and broad like a glider's. For a supersonic intercept, they could sweep back and become razor thin, reducing drag to an absolute minimum. No complex, heavy hydraulic systems like on a B-1 bomber. This would be the material itself changing its properties in response to an electrical current. But it gets weirder. What about self-healing? We are already seeing polymers in laboratories that can repair themselves when cut or punctured. Imagine a fighter takes a hit from shrapnel. Instead of a gaping hole, a viscous, resin-like substance is automatically secreted into the breach, hardening within seconds to restore structural integrity and aerodynamic performance. The plane literally heals itself. And then there's the holy grail of stealth, active camouflage. Current stealth is passive. It's about shaping and radar-absorbent materials to reduce the radar return. A 7th gen fighter might have a skin made of metamaterial tiles that can actively sense incoming radar waves and broadcast a signal that is perfectly out of phase, completely cancelling the return signal. It wouldn't just be hard to see on radar, it would be a black hole. It could even go a step further and record the signal, modify it, and send back the signature of a flock of geese or a commercial airliner or a dozen enemy fighters where there is only one. The skin of the aircraft becomes a weapon of deception. Combine this with visual camouflage. The same tiles could act as tiny OLED screens, projecting the image of the sky from the other side of the aircraft, making it nearly invisible to the human eye. It's the Predator's cloaking device, but based on real. A 7th Gen fighter's biggest challenge won't be aerodynamics, 
It will be thermodynamics and power generation. The engines will have to be a leap beyond the adaptive cycle engines of the sixth generation. We're likely looking at some form of multi-cycle propulsion, perhaps combining a turbine engine for low-speed flight with a ramjet or scramjet-like mode for incredible high-speed efficiency. The entire airframe would be integrated into the propulsion system with inlets and nozzles that can change shape just like the wings. But the real revolution will be in the power generation apart from propulsion. The engine won't just be for thrust, it will be a flying power plant. This might involve magnetohydrodynamics, generating electricity directly from the hot exhaust gases. Or it could involve a dedicated, compact core, perhaps not full-on nuclear fusion that might still be a bridge too far, but some advanced form of high-density energy storage or generation that we are only just beginning to research. Equally important is thermal management. All that power generates a colossal amount of heat. The AI, the sensors, the lasers, they all create a thermal signature that could make the plane light up like a Christmas tree for infrared sensors. A 7th gen fighter might use its own fuel as a heat sink, circulating it throughout the airframe to absorb heat before it's burned in the engine. It might even find ways to weaponize that heat, or use thermoelectric materials in its skin to convert the heat directly back into electricity. The record broken here is one of pure energy density and efficiency, turning the entire aircraft into a self-contained, perfectly balanced energy ecosystem. The sixth gen concept of a loyal wingman is just the beginning. A seventh generation fighter won't be a single aircraft. It will be the Queen Bee. Zhaoxiang? Kihinbi of a vast, distributed, and largely disposable swarm of drones. This isn't just one or two wingmen. We're talking about dozens or even hundreds of small, specialized, uncrewed systems that are networked with the mothership. The seventh gen fighter might not even carry its own missiles. Why would it, when it can command a swarm of flying magazines, simple drones that are little more than an engine, a sensor, and a missile to do the shooting for it? For some drones in the swarm will be dedicated sensors, flying far ahead and to the sides, creating a sensor net hundreds of miles wide. Others will be dedicated electronic warfare platforms and acting as decoys or standoff jammers. Others still will be tiny, stealthy suicide drones designed to take out enemy radar sites or even fly directly into the engine intakes of enemy fighters. The 7th Gen platform, controlled by its cognitive AI, acts as the distributed brain for this entire swarm body. It can sacrifice drones without a second thought to save the main platform. It can use the swarm to create complex, multi-axis attacks that are impossible to defend against. The enemy won't be facing a single fighter. They'll be facing a coordinated, intelligent, shape-shifting storm of threats. This breaks the most fundamental record of all, the concept of a fighter as a single unit. The seventh generation fighter is not a plane, it's a mobile, airborne battle network. The ethical place of human in seventh generation AI fighter jets. So with a cognitive AI flying the plane, managing the battle and controlling a swarm of drones, where does the human pilot fit in? This is perhaps the most profound question. For a seventh generation platform, the human is almost certainly not in the cockpit. The G-forces, the reaction time requirements, the sheer data overload, a human body and mind become the weakest link. Instead, the human will be on the loop, not in the loop. A human command sitting safely in a ground station hundreds or thousands of miles away will act as a strategic and ethical overseer. They won't be dogfighting. They will be managing a fleet of these seventh gen systems, giving them strategic goals. Achieve air superiority over this sector or disable that enemy command node. The human role shifts from operating to commander, from fencer to chess master. They set the intent and they hold the ultimate veto power. The AI might signal an intent to engage a target it has identified as hostile. The human commander, using their own judgment and understanding of the rules of engagement, gives the final yes 
or no. This keeps human moral and ethical responsibility in the chain of command, a crucial step to prevent a true Skynet scenario. But make no mistake, the second-to-second -second combat decisions will be made by the machine, breaking the concept of air power. Given that the sixth generation is slated for the late 2030s or early 2040s, we are likely looking at the 2050s, 2060s, or even later for a true seventh generation system. The technological hurdles are immense, and the cost will be, to put it mildly, astronomical. But when it arrives, it won't just break records for speed, altitude, or stealth. Those are our 20th century metrics. It will break the record for decision-making speed, reducing it from seconds to microseconds. It will break the record for physical force with a morphing, self-healing body. It will break the record for invisibility, becoming a ghost in the machine of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. It will break the record for lethality, wielding weapons that move at the speed of light. And it will break the record for what a fighter even is, transforming it from a single aircraft into a distributed, intelligent swarm. The seventh generation fighter represents a fundamental shift in the nature of warfare. It's the point where aviation artificial intelligence, material science, and network theory all converge into a single terrifyingly capable whole. It's less of a plane and more of a sentient, weaponized concept that happens to fly. So yes, forget the B-2 or the B-21. They are magnificent machines, but they are the final, perfect expressions of an old idea. The seventh generation fighter is the beginning of a completely new one, and it will change the very definition of power in the sky.